All right, it is a bright day outside. I'll show you outside. We're gonna go move some cows um, and we're gonna actually plant our fall potatoes. However, before we do, we just got a call that said uh, they've got some honeybees in a tree next to their house and they wanna move. So we're definitely not specialists, but anytime someone says there's free bees and they're usually survivor bees just because they've been going around looking for a place to go, we want to accommodate them in a bee house. So what we're gonna do is take a nuke. This is what we tend to do. We tend to, instead of using a big one or anything like that to catch them like a, a regular deep like you see right there, and use, uh, I mean you can, if you have, if you don't have two tops, you can use this, close up all the entrances on a typical bottom and then ratchet it down. But this is the easiest way if you're catching them. Take a top and flip it over, make it a bottom. Put your nuke, a nuke is basically a five frame beginner hive. And take another top. So basically you'll put it on top, closes it up, they can't get out of it. We'll leave them in that usually a day or two with uh, with wax baited uh, deep frames in there, five frames. So that way they get used to knowing, hey, there's a place here for you. And uh, hopefully they'll enjoy the Max Happy Homestead. So we're gonna go ahead and get that ready, take it over there, see if we can grab them. We'll take you on for the journey. Then we'll come back and do a little bit more work here. I don't know if you can see it, but that kind of stuff right there. Sorry, my box is falling off. You see all that, that old wax? What we do is we'll clean these and then we'll take wax, melt it down, use it for candles and and you know, different things beeswax we use for, and Missy's got videos on it. We use it for salves, we use it for all kinds of things. But one thing we do is we take it, and we, we get a clump of it, make it in a little thing, and then we'll kind of grate it onto this, this uh, basically this, this foundation. The reason we do that is because it makes the bees say, I mean, first of all, it smells phenomenal, but it makes them used to it. It, it wants to make the, it's attractive to them. So we'll put it in here and we want them to build on it. So we'll, they'll build their comb already on wax that's kind of put on there. So we bait it that way. Now when we're also baiting it, we also put some lemongrass on a little cotton ball, put usually on the corner here. So that's two ways that we tend to not only bait a swarm box, but also to keep a swarm in. So. Well, these bees are going to be impossible to get they're in that i mean you see where they're in that hole right there and they're flying in and out there's just no way for us to get them it's only about 10 foot up so that's not the hard part but to try to get the queen now there's been some people that will vacuum them out but to be honest with you you don't know if it's worth the work because the hole is so small i don't even know if you get deep in there and just depending on how deep the you know the bees are so i don't i don't know what the answer is for the, these folks but uh, it's a failure for us. So we're not gonna be able to get these. We're gonna go back home and see if we can get some other things done um, I hate that we can't get them, but like I said, I don't think we're getting them. now we, we talked about baiting a box and we may bait, bait a box and see if we can get them, but uh, Yeah, I just don't I don't know if we're gonna be able to get them. We'll see All right, as you can see the, the bees did not work out in our favor um, To get those so we came back home got a little work done around here I had to go inside for a little bit do some chores so we're gonna go ahead and plant those potatoes. Now, this is a complete trial for us. We've never planted fall potatoes. Um, and these potatoes are not ones we bought. These are not tubers. These are our personal potatoes that uh, have already put eyes out and uh, are, are really ready to plant. So we're gonna try and we're gonna keep it heavily watered. We're gonna put a good bit of or organic compost down and um, let's just see what happens. Uh, me and Aiden are gonna get these plants. So uh, let me explain these bits to you right quick that we've done if you remember this is the the hornworm epic fail uh, we've got this this um, this bed here and this bed uh, basically has I put part manure um, let's see some topsoil that we get mixed locally here there's a lot of sand in it, so it makes that so uh, soil really loose especially for winter planting and fall planting but also for potatoes potatoes tend to need more of a sandy or loose soil this is another one here 
This is where some of our rest of our tomatoes were that were uh, spring and summer. Um, and then had the carrots here, if you remember. So now we're gonna go ahead and plant the potatoes and onions here uh, for a fall onion and, and potatoes. So again, never, never tried it. We're going on a true whim. And again, on a sustainability kick to see if we can get these things uh, going. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get them planted. Uh, like I said, the loose soil is great for these two things, especially with it being well draining, but also being a good quality soil for the potatoes to really make um, more potatoes. So let's go ahead and get them planted, and then we will finish up today with uh, with what they look like and how they get planted. All right, I don't know, I don't know how y'all plant uh, potatoes, but again, our tubers. You know, we've already fertilized this with an organic fertilizer. We also put some uh, some fish emulsion in here, um, and basically because it's so loose, I just take the back side of my you know hoe or shovel or whatever and, and actually make the hole so i know where my placement are for my tubers and so basically i've got holes ready for them to go into so what we'll do is is of course dig it out a little bit more and put the tubers in that but now i know i have even amount of holes spacing and all so it makes it a little bit easier for us me to see and i could just go real quick and then uh you know cover them right back up so that's that's just the way we do it i don't know if it's the right way or wrong way we do tend to put them deeper um just because we believe that uh that's smart uh, especially with the temperatures being a little hot still here in Mississippi. So our goal is to put them deeper so that way maybe that soil will stay around that 75, 80 verse, you know, 90 to 100 like it is on this top here. So we're going to go deeper with them and also make sure you always put your your, um, your your potatoes right in the ground. So basically where the nods are, the nodules are, they need to be facing up. You see, this is all our harvest of what's left of our harvest of the potatoes and onions that we had and garlic from spring. So we're going to plant them again for, for fall. And if they flop, they flop. Um, if they don't flop, then we have went from a spring and fall and, and made all year round potato and onion. So we're gonna try it. And hopefully we will be saying that this is working really well. So, <laughs> so let's get them planted. All right, we have got the potatoes planted here got uh, got new organic fertilizer down with it underneath it and on top of it along with compost topsoil made from a local person it's got a lot of sand in it and then also we had some manure that we mixed in from our farm so we've got this bed we've got one across over here uh, we'll walk over there real quick it's half potatoes half onions now I know this is not onion season and really not really potato season but if I'm gonna lose them I might as well try to grow some there's some sprouting so I was not gonna uh, I was just gonna try it and see what happens so Got those, the, of course, asparagus is looking good. We gave it, gave it a good little water. But um, I think we're gonna kind of end the day. We've got, uh, we had to pull some things out of the greenhouse, the basil, the rosemary, and also the lavender because it's just so hot. Um, our strawberries are coming back. You know, Misty started weeding this bed. We've got a little bit more weeding to do, but our strawberries are coming back. It's about 30 or 40 plants. So we're hoping that that comes up good. I'm gonna show you something real quick. In Mississippi, we've got, uh, of course this is the strawberry patch inside and we pretty much get more strawberries off here than we do um, outside but look at this we've got our tangerines growing we've got our lemons growing there's probably 20 lemons on that tree probably three or four tangerines on this tree um, we cut these back right above two years ago they got caught in freezing but I, we cut them back um, goodness probably a year and a half ago and it was a, it was it was above where it's supposed to be because you you know the thing about fruit we're trying to learn is you cut a, a lower than what it needs to be then you grow a lot of wild thickets and a lot of briars but it doesn't grow actual fruit um well we we fixed both of these where we're growing them above the the line and they need to be done and basically they're all producing new leaves and also new lemons new tangerines so even in mississippi we can get it grown so. we did get one more rotation on this one you see they ate it down we let them eat it down heavy on this time our grass has slowed a little bit um because it's just getting that time of year where august starts getting so hot some of the good old spring and summer grass is getting a little hard to grow and then again these two paddocks both we let them have one more rotation we said we were not going to do one more rotation but we did and we let them eat them down this will be our rye grass plots come in the next few weeks um, but we moved them to this fresh grass you see the difference 
Let me just how good and lush this is. So we've got them on yet for right now. Um, we are going to HOA in about a month. Um, so what we're going to do is do just like we did last time we went to Michigan. Let them eat this down to normal grass. Move them off of it so it will have a month to grow without any uh, problems. And this will be the paddock they'll be in when our uh, farm sitter comes. Uh, what we'll do is probably just put Elsa only in here. Uh, so that way they will not have to worry about Ike or even Allie. We have been stanching training her. Um, but just while I'm gone, just for safety, I hate to uh, put, you know, bringing her in the stanchion on uh, our farm setter. So we may, we'll ask them, and if they feel comfortable, we'll let them work with Allie. But if not, then we won't put that on them, and we'll move her off with the bull and with Beauty and with Ike. Uh, but this field, we'll let them eat on down. It's a beautiful grass. This is the ice cream grass. It's about four to six inches. So it really could have kept on growing, but I, I need to get a good, fresh uh, uh, cow mowing on it so that way once we go or once we take them off of it in about five or six days uh, it'll be ready to grow I'll probably cut over it again just to make sure with the mower just to get a good clean cut and then that'll give us about a month uh, to grow before we actually have to um, put them on it or put at least Elsa on it while we're going to HOA but just just a little update on the cows that are here um, Ike is growing off really well. He uh, he's only about four and a half months old, five months old. He's growing good. He will be uh, our freezer calf as uh, we get closer to uh, early spring, late winter, early spring next year or this year. We've got Elsa, of course. It just looks beautiful. She's the milk cow. You see, uh, we've been stanching training her. And you see, she's kind of walking in, enjoying. Look how thick she is for a uh, you know a milk cow, a Jersey cow. They tend to always look kind of homely. I mean, anybody can tell you if they have cows, they kind of look homely, but look how thick Allie looks. She's pregnant. She's about seven months heavy bred. So you can see she is just put on some weight, big girl. So she's doing really well though. She has been doing some stance and training. So she's really done well there. Elsa has, has slowed down her milking. She went to about 1.2, 1.3 gallons worth of milk during the summer months which is it's a little for her she's usually going you know one uh 1.5 to 1.7 to even two gallons so she's starting to pick back up this morning she did um 1.4 right at 1.5 so i was real pleased with that so hopefully as it gets a little bit better weather over the next few weeks we do have one or two 100 day 100 uh, degree days coming up but i'm hoping over the next few days we will, um, or excuse me, the next few weeks as it starts getting a little cooler, hopefully she will seem to do better and get back up to her normal, um, you know, 1.7, 1.8. Uh, We're going to wrap this video up. I hope you have a great day. God bless. And uh, happy homesteading, y'all.